Okay, everyone, welcome to Wordle in the Terminal in Java with Tokyo EdTech. That is me. Um, the idea for this came from, actually, uh, I was did it, this in Python a couple days ago. So let's go take a look at that. I'm going to run it and show you what the program looks like. It's supposed to look like. So in Wordle, you are given a five-letter word, and you have six guesses to figure out what that word is. So I'm going to try, uh, please. And so what you see here is E, A, and S are in the word, but they're in the wrong spot. So that's why this is yellow. So let's see, shake, yeah, that's one of the words. Okay, so S and A are in the word. E is in the word and in the last spot. Now you can kind of see here some of these words. So it's probably a muse. And you can see I got all four correct. I win, yay me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to do that in Java. So just a quick kind of overview. Um, you may have seen the game like this. Um, it's much nicer, obviously, with graphics, but we're gonna do it in the terminal, kick it old school. And I wanna thank, uh, thank Yamashita Tatsuo-san for this picture here on Flickr. Um, so you can see that the correct word is shake, and based on the, uh, what the user enters each round, you can see how the colors change. Again, P and T are not in the word at all. M, U, D, R are not in the word. Um, A and S are in the word, but they're not in the correct location. Now, E is in the word, and it is in the correct location. So that's kind of how this works. So what we're gonna be looking at today is, let me get back to the other screen, is using this in Java, or programming this in Java, and we're gonna be using the scanner class to get input. We're gonna be using substring to compare one character at a time. We're definitely gonna use some loops. We're gonna use ANSI color codes. Okay, so that's what you saw with like the background was yellow, the background was green. Uh, those come from, they're called you know, ANSI color codes. I, I got them from this website. Um, this blog is amazing, check it out. I'll put a link down below uh, if you're watching this on YouTube. and. Basically, there are these special codes that you can enter into the terminal and they will change the color of the text. They'll change the color of the background of the text. Okay, and we're only going to be using a, a few of those. And there's a bunch of them here. Check it out. It's really, really useful. I'll show you just the bare minimum you need to program Wordle. So let's go ahead and get coding on that. So this is a Java program. So we're going to need a class and it's going to be called Wordle. Now notice. I've saved this already as wordle.java. Notice it's capitalized. And then of course we need our public static void main string args. And I'm not gonna use any functions in this program. I'm just gonna put everything inside the main method. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and try and compile this and just to make sure it compiles. Now if I run it, nothing's gonna happen because there's no code that does anything. So let's go ahead and get started. So system.out.println, wordle, wordle. Let's not put exclamation point, but I like exclamation points. So what we need first is we need the correct word and we need a guess from the user. So these are gonna be strings, so correct. And we're gonna just go ahead and use what we saw earlier. Um, so if I go back to Mashasan's thing here, we're gonna use shake as our correct word. Notice how I've capitalized all the letters, uh, and I'm gonna make a string called guess. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use what we see here, paste. Now eventually we'll get input from the user, but just for now, we'll just start like this. Okay. So the user is going to make a guess, and in this case, it is paste. So. What we need to do here, this, this is where, especially beginners are like, well, I don't even know how to start this, what would I do? Um, so we need to think about the problem a little bit. So in my mind, we're not looking at a word so much as we're looking at each letter. So basically we wanna know, are S and P the same letter? If they are, then we're going green, okay? If they're not, then we gotta check and see, well, is P in the word somewhere, but not the first letter? If it is, then we gotta go yellow. And then if it's not green or yellow, 
it's not in a word at all. We're just going to do a regular black background. So this is going to be pretty simple. Um, so in Java, like the way that we get the first letter out of our string is going to be like this. I'm going to do if uh, correct dot substring zero comma one oops comma one dot equals. Notice I'm not using equals equals. This does not work correctly, or it doesn't work as you expect in Java. We're going to use the equals method, and it's going to be guess dot substring. Actually, I'm going to reverse that. Um, I did this the same way in Python, so I'm going to say guess dot substring, and it doesn't really matter, but it just seems a bit easier to follow for me. So guess dot substring zero one. So p is the zeroth letter. A is the first letter, so zero and one. These are the indices or the indexes, however you want to say it. So this is zero, one, two, three, four. So notice there are five letters, but the index is zero, one, two, three, and four. So hopefully you should probably already know that before you try this. Um, so then we're gonna go dot equals, and we're gonna say correct dot substring, zero comma one. And let's make sure we get the right number of parentheses. So notice this parenthesis matches this parenthesis, and this matches this. Now if you're curious, I'm using an editor called Genie. It is free and open source. I'll put a link below. Check it out. Okay, so this is our first case. So the letter matches. So what we would do here is we would print, you know, in green. So system dot out dot print. Okay, so we need to print green. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Now I'm just gonna copy this from my Python program, but you could also get it from that web page I showed you. So basically what I've got is I've got three different codes. I got background green, background yellow, and reset. So I'm gonna go over back to my Java, and I'm just gonna put these in the program here just at the start. So these are, these are gonna be final because they don't change. They are strings, so I'm gonna say final string bg green. Because I'm never these don't change. These are these are constant string. Which is nice also because I can use this same uh, you know variable naming convention. Uh, final string reset. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to put this is correct, so it'd be bg green plus uh, guess dot sub string zero comma one plus reset. So what that does is it prints across, notice there's no print ln because we do want to print across. So it will print with a green background, the first letter of guess, now I could have done correct because they're going to be the same letter in this case, but it makes it a little bit easier in the next part to do it. And then I want to reset back to black and white because we don't know what the next one's going to be. So our second case is else if, oops, and this is a case where the letter is in the word but in a different location. And so to figure out if a letter is in a word, we use index of. So watch what I do here. So if correct dot index, oops, index of guess dot substring oops, zero comma one, is greater than negative one. So index of tells us whether or not a letter is in, or actually it tells us where a letter is in a different string. If it's not there, it returns negative one. So for example, P is not in shape, so it's gonna return negative one. But if I wanna do the A, A is in shake at zero, one, and two. So it's greater than negative one, so we're gonna print that out as 
yellow. So I'm going to copy this. Letter is in Word, but different location. So then I'm just going to change that to background yellow. And the final else, okay, so not, we've got it wrong. It's not in the words. Nothing's happened. We're just going to go ahead and say, you know, not in Word, not in Word. We're just going to go ahead and print it out. So system, system, dot out, dot print, uh, guess, dot substring, zero, comma, one. All right. So I think that's about right. So let's go ahead and test it. Let's see what happens here. Um, pretty confident, but maybe a mistake. You never know. And this is always what I tell students. Okay, so we got an error because uh, I copy and pasted from Python. I forgot my semicolons. I wonder how many of you caught that. If you caught that, go ahead and comment below. Uh, let's go ahead and co compile that again. Okay, compile successfully. Okay, so P is black and white. So black background, white letters, which is what we expect because P is not in the word. So let's go ahead and try S. Let's do a different word, so shame. And let's compile that. So now we're compiling S or comparing S and S. And that gives us green, which is what we want. So let's do amuse. And this should give us yellow because A is in the word, but it's in a different location. Okay, so I've tested all three possibilities that I know of. And at this point, I'm pretty confident that what I've done is correct. Okay, you know, there, there's always unintended consequences, but I'm pretty confident that is what should happen. Okay, so this is our basic comparison. Okay, this, this, this will work for all of our different comparisons. The problem is we need to compare first letter to the first letter. Or I should say zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. There's no five, five, because it's zero to four. So those of you at home who've done this before, hopefully are thinking, hey, this would be a great place for a loop, and you are correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to create a loop to iterate through each letter. So I'm going to say for int i equals zero. We're starting at zero i is less than 5 because that's the length of the word. Now, in Wordle, the words are always five letters, so we can use i is less than 5. We want to increment by 1 each time. So put a curly brace. Now be careful here because you got to indent that part. Okay, so this should line up. This should line up. Let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. Hopefully you figure out there's a problem. So, so it does ah, 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 okay, because we got A and S. So it's not changing. It's, it's hard-coded to 0 and 1. So here's what I always tell my students to think about. What is the relationship between 0 and 1 mathematically? So, you know, you think about it, okay, obviously, 0 plus 1 is 1. So the relationship is plus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put i and i plus 1. So everywhere I've got 0, 1, I'm going to change that to i and i plus 1. And the last one. So let's go ahead and compile that and see what happens. Okay, and you can see we've got A-M-U-S-E. So the word is shake. So A is in the word, but it's in the wrong spot. S is in the word, but it's in the wrong spot. And then E is in the word, and it is in the correct spot, and M and U are not. So I'm pretty confident that this is what we want to happen. Let's go ahead and do shake just to test it. Okay, and then obviously it's working, okay? So 
at this point, we've got the basic program functioning as we want. We've done the hard part, really. Um, it was just like kind of comparing everything, printing out the colors, et cetera, et cetera. So the next thing we need to think about is, well, let's, let's go ahead and do input from the user. Well, yeah, we'll have to do input from the user at this point. Okay, so to do that, we're going to use something called the scanner class. So I'm going to say import java.util.scanner. And then down here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a scanner object. So we're going to say scanner sc equals new scanner. We have to type system.in. And I presume most of you are familiar with this at this point. Uh, and then for the user, the user is going to ask for sc.nextline. Okay? And that will get input from the user. And I'm going to go ahead and try that, see what happens. So I'm going to compile it. And what did I do wrong? Spelled system wrong. Brilliant. <laughs> it's, it's really hard to talk and type at the same time. Okay, so Wordle. Okay, well, I should have typed something there. So let's try uh, shake. Okay, so shake, shake. Everybody's happy. Looks like it's working. Um, let me go ahead and put here a little print. So system.out.println, or print ln, print, uh, what did I put over here in the Python program? Uh, let's try to make it look similar. Um, please guess, okay, that's very original. <laughs> okay, please guess. Let's go ahead and try this again. Uh, I type system, out, compile, okay, let's do shake again, okay, we got all four, notice it doesn't loop, we'll, we'll fix that in a minute, uh, I'm going to try this again, I'm going to type shake, lowercase, let's see what happens, first of all, what do you think is going to happen, and if you said, well, uh, nothing, <laughs> you're correct, sort of, so you can see how it doesn't even recognize, like, the letters at all, okay, which is kind of sad. That is not what we wanted to happen. Um, now it's weird that it didn't print anything out. Yes, that's such a ring. I like this one. Hmm, that's weird. Let's go ahead and try that. Oh, did I mess that up? Such a ring. Yeah, I did that. Hmm. Let's go ahead and try it one more time. So amuse. Okay, that works. Amuse. Oh, yeah, it's printing out. It's printing out what I printed. Okay, duh. Okay, so what we got to do is we're just going to go ahead and use dot upper. I think we can add it here. I didn't test this one. And this will change whatever I type into uppercase. So let's compile it. Nope. Cannot find. Uh, okay, upper is Python. It's two upper, maybe, in Java. Nope, still not happy with that. Um, let's try it down here. So I'm going to say guess equals guess dot two upper. I think it's two upper in Java. Let's run that. It does not like this at all. Cannot find symbol guess. Guess equals string guess equals guess. That's just not right. Let's try this. And then we'll say guess equals Cannot find symbol. Why can it not find the symbol? Um, let me think about this for a minute. Okay, I messed around with that a little bit, and I figured out what it is. Ugh. All right, let's uh, let's put this back to what I had before. Uh, string guess. I'll say guess, and then we'll say guess equals sc dot next line dot two upper case. Um, it'll come as no surprise. I don't do a lot of Java programming, believe it or not, um, compared to Python at least. So then it compiles, and here we go. Let's try the shake. And notice how shake was converted to all capital letters, and now it is working. Um, so let me gonna have to move this up here. Because we're gonna now we need to add a loop where we get six guesses. Okay, so the loop is going to start here. 
So loop for six guesses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another for loop. And I, I could, there's different ways I could do this, but I'm going to do with another for loop since we know it's always six guesses. Uh, and we'll say int. Now I can't use guess because we already use guess here. And I'll say round. So round one, round two. So round equals uh, zero. Now we could make it one. If you want, we can make it round one. Um, but usually we count from zero, just like we did with the index for the strings. So for int round zero equals, or round equals zero, round is less than six, and round plus plus. Now what happens is this whole thing now has to go inside that loop. And again, there's, we could have done it a slightly different way. We could make a function, make it a little bit cleaner. Um, but again, I make these for my students and my students haven't really learned a lot about functions yet. So um, we'll get to that eventually. So this gives us six guesses. Let's go ahead and try it. And we're gonna see some weird, weird things here, I think. Um, so I'm gonna say guess, I'm gonna try amuse since we know that's one word. Now it gave me the correct output, but then it put this next to that, which I don't want. So I'm gonna type uh, control Z to end that. So after the loop that iterates through each letter, we need to print to the next line. So system.out.println and that'll go to the next line for us. Let's go ahead and test that. Okay, so amuse. Um, let's see what else can we do. Shale. Okay, almost all of them. A, B, C, D, E. Uh, let's go ahead and do the correct word, see what happens. Okay, so notice we got the word correct, but it's still playing. Okay, so this is, this is something we have to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix that. So after we check, we're going to say if uh, guess dot equals correct. Uh, yes, is correct. Okay. So system dot system dot out dot print ln. Let's go ahead. And again, this is, you notice how every time I make a, a change of some sort, I go ahead and I recompile it, I retest it, so I know kind of what's going on. And I forget that all the time. Okay, let's run it now. Okay, amuse and shake. Correct, you win. Program didn't stop. Uh, and that is one I actually system.exit? Oh, let's try system.exit. Does that end does that end the program? Does it even compile? No. <laughs> yeah, I forget I forget actually forget how to do that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break out of the loop. So break will end this for loop. Um, so that's a command you might not know. Use, okay, shake. Okay, so we got all five correct. It says correct you win. Program is over. Um, now we haven't dealt with one other situation. Okay, and this is where I think this is my sixth guess. So I did six guesses, I didn't get it correct. I should do something with that. Okay, so as I said, when I use this break command, I broke out of this six guess loop. So I'm gonna go down. What I'm gonna do is after that, so print correct answer if a uh, player loses. So I'm just gonna do if not guess dot equals Correct. So if the guess is not equal to the correct number, if we've gotten this far and guess is not equal, we'll do system dot 
dot out dot print ln uh, wrong wrong the correct word is and we'll say plus correct and I think that's it let's try it okay uh, I guess might not have been initialized uh, okay um, let's see here string guess so basically up here because I put string guess I didn't give the value um, I just initialized I didn't initialize it I just you know I just yeah <laughs> it just made the string <laughs> but I didn't give it a value it's null right now um, now this down here there's no guarantee in the computer's mind that we'll get to this so what we got to do is just give this a value and I'm just gonna give it null uh, not null I'm gonna give it an empty string sorry there's a big difference there so now it compiles now it's happy um, okay so let's do amuse uh, again third fourth fifth here's my sixth attempt and wrong it says the correct word is shake okay, so basically we now have a functioning wordle game let me go ahead and compile it one more time and amuse simple that's, a, that's too many letters slams okay and shake and correct you name okay so the only the only problem with this game now is that it always shake is always the word so let's go ahead and fix that real quick and so what we're going to do is we're going to make a list of words or an array of words sorry list or python so i'm going to make an array of strings I'm going to call it words. Okay, and this way I can actually just set it at the beginning. So I'm just going to be lazy and copy this from over here. Because I already did shake, share, panic, and use, and shade. So I'm going to copy that over to here. Okay. And let's compile that, make sure I did that right. Because I don't do as much Java as I do Python, and I do make mistakes and stuff like this. So what we need to do is we need to choose a random word. So we need to, I think we need to import java.util.random. Or no, no, it's math. It's math.random. That's what we wanted. I think there is a random, but I think we'll just do math. Um, let's try this. So what we'll say is, so we'll say words. And then it's going to be math.random times, here, let's, let's separate this out. So we'll say int uh, w index equals math.random math times uh, words.length. And again, I should check this, but it might be this. Length. We gotta do int. We gotta cast this. Yeah, I probably should have figured this one out ahead of time. Um, I don't think this is gonna be quite correct, but we'll try it. Um, length. I think I'm gonna add one here. Plus one. Let's try it. Um, w index. Let's see if it even works. Compiled. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I don't think that's right. Let's try it. Okay, we compiled it. Let's run it. And okay. Gosh darn it. Almost there. Come on. Why is my computer doing this to me? All right, let's try it one more time. Ah. Index five out of bounds, yeah. Okay, that was not a good idea. Not sure why I did that. Okay, where's that length? So zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, that was my bad. Um, so this will give us a random number from zero to four. Uh, just trust me on that one. Uh, maybe add one. 
Okay, so let's try to use. Okay, let's try to shake. Ooh, it's not shake. Shale? Share? And correct e link. All right, so let's try it one more time. Just make sure it's not always giving us the same word. Muse, shake, and shake was correct. Okay, so there you have it. A um, couple little hiccups here and there. Uh, again, sorry, I'm much more familiar with Python than I am Java, and but we got it done. So just kind of to go through this one more time real quick, um, you'll see we have the scanner class. We use that for user input. We've used these ANSI color codes. Again, there's quite a few more you can use. It's pretty, pretty cool actually what you can do with it. We printed out the title. We chose a random word using the math.random method and a little bit of math there in casting. Again, if you don't know that part, you just, just copy it as it is. So we chose, we chose one of the words at random. Now you can add as many as you like here and this will automatically adjust. Then using the scanner, we're going to be getting a guess from the user. So we have six rounds. In each round, there's a guess. We compare each of the five letters to its counterpart in the correct word and print out green if it matches, yellow if it matches but in a different location, and regular, like black and white, if it is not in the word. Then we print a new line so we can go to the next line. And we check if the player has won, we break, game over. If the player is not one, we repeat until we get to six tries. If we get to six tries and the player has not guessed the correct word, we tell them the correct word, game is over. Pretty cool. Okay, so, you know, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, follow, join my Discord, whatever. Links are down below. Take care.